Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. Hello, welcome to River City Gamer Podcast. I am SCXCR. I am Unreal. And I am Amayurot Akago. And to start podcast, first you need turn on computer. But you can use your finger. You could use a pencil, or you could just go to gaming news. Gaming news, so unreal. So should I just get some non E three news out of the way, and then we can just proceed as normal? Yeah, that sounds about right. Sure. All right. Well, this actually took place shortly after E three. Did you knew that game trailers was a part of Viacom, right? Yeah. Not didn't really. They- didn't they get sold off? Yeah, they wound up going over to Defy Media. And in the process, a bunch of people got laid off. Oh, that oh, sucks. God. Yeah, Polygon, well, it's Polygon reporting this, but so uh, take it with a grain of salt. But Polygon says that as many as half of the full-time Game Trailers employees lost their jobs after E3. And the article actually highlights someone who posted on Twitter, My 10th E3 complete, Friday the 13th, just got laid off from game trailers. FML. Wow. I I don't know what to say about that. Losing jobs is basically garbage, so that's pretty much all I have to say about that. It sucked. Yeah. Hard enough just to get a job. And of all the times to do it right after E3... Hey, that was a good E3, now get out. Well, hopefully there's some other outlet that can pick those people up. I mean, if nothing else, after E3, you're going to have at least made a few contacts with some other people, so maybe you can get an inlet somewhere. Uh, Yeah, I guess. Let's hope so for them. Well, moving on to slightly different news. This actually involves Nintendo. They've already been sued or had lawsuits against them three times regarding patent infringement. And make that four. Because uh, an appeals court last Friday said uh, that the patent lawsuit against Nintendo by Triton Tech is invalid. This also involves the tech behind Nintendo's Wii Remote. Hmm. And And Nintendo won? Yeah, Nintendo won. Yeah. But... The good news ends there because they're still also dealing with a lawsuit from both Secure Access and Philips. Right, because Philips is still mad. Mm. I guess. It's a mad world. <laughs> when it's when it's just some random company suing them, you kind of th- think like, yeah, they're just. They just got uh, no leg to stand on, they're suing them over nothing, but when it's a big company like Philips, then you kind of start to wonder what's really going on there. But yeah, still bullshit. Um, I actually got um, two quick articles that I just found. This is pretty super recent. One of them is Batman Arkham Knight related, and this is actually pretty funny, but Kevin Conroy, Batman himself, accidentally leaked the month of release, which is now slated to be January 2015. Oh my. Oops. And hell, he he said that it was supposed to come out January of this year. But, of course, it's not done yet, so next January. So, look forward to that, even though it was originally slated for October, but of course, now it's delayed. I hope there aren't any game-breaking bugs in this one. Eh, well, Origins was not made by Rocksteady, so take that as you will. I've not even played Origins yet, though I kind of want to. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. I haven't played any of the Arkham games yet. Play City, if nothing else. City is fucking awesome. Although, Asylum still comes highly recommended. I still want to play the first one, but... I want to get, like, a version that doesn't have the awful, awful cover art. Uh... Or was that a different one? What do you... Th like, what does it look like? Oh, it's you the mean white the... one which has the review scores all pasted all over the place. That is City Game of the Year. I oh, went out okay. of my way to not get Game of the Year edition for that. From Gamefly. And I've somehow never seen with a that. And somehow the Arkham City Blu-ray has a giant scratch on it and it still reads. Ooh. That's fortunate. Blu-ray, son. This ain't no DVDs. <laughs> I get that joke, even though I've still never played Metal Gear Rising. I never I really want it. to. Um, and I've got one more a news article, and it's Capcom related. Um, oh boy, oh boy, the producer of Street Fighter, Yoshinori Ono, um, he resigned from Capcom Vancouver. Oh, I heard about that. Although we don't know if he's leaving the entire company, but if he leaves the entire company. I think we know exactly why. I can guess. Getting off the sinking ship? Mm-hmm. Well, the ship's practically underwater already. It's just swimming to the surface that matters. Well, that yeah, that was... freezing to death. Yeah, I guess mm. so. Because I, I remember that Ono had, like... Like, had to go to the hospital at one point because he got overworked to shit. At least he's doing better, right? I suppose. Or he's taking the ne steps necessary to get better. Next thing you know, he joins Platinum Games or another <laughs> company that has former Capcom. <laughs> because it's better to be anywhere but Capcom at this point. Next thing you know, the Monster Hunter creator fucking leaves Capcom. Then it's all over. I wouldn't be surprised by much at this point. Hmm, yeah. I would continue to be apathetic because Capcom doesn't really make anything I care about, but it's still sucks that they're her, uh, the stuff that they've been doing lately, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I grabbed. So, I think that should be it, unless you got something else. I do not. I think we can just forego um, upcoming releases, since a lot of it is going to be stuff that was mentioned at E3 anyway, so let's just go ahead into recent pickups. And I'll go ahead and go first, because mine is going to be really quick. Uh, I only have two games that I picked up recently. One is Skate for PS3, which I've been putting off for a long, long time. So, does that mean you're gonna make um, easy, fun glitch videos? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Unless, I wonder if, it, if that shit was possible in Skate 1. I know Skate 2 and 3 had it, especially 3. Well, I have Skate 3. That was given to me by Zero. Okay, then you could deliberately set up glitches. Yep. Perfect. And the other one that I got, I doubled <laughs> the amount of 3DS games I have because now I have Bravely Default. Akago, uh, did you buy games? Uh, I did actually buy a few things here and there, but only stuff I already own. Like, when there was uh, stuff on sale on Steam or on GOG, then I figured I might as well get a uh, digital copy for cheap. So, uh, a couple of stuff I picked up in the recent GOG sale, uh, the entire Thief collection. So, Thief Gold, Thief Tooth, Thief De 3. <laughs> and not no the forest. Don't worry about that. But well, well, yeah, because I didn't own that one, and uh, I'm not sure if that seems like a game that I want to have anyway. <laughs> uh, Omicron the Nomad Soul, the very first David Cage game. Postal 2 Complete, Shadow Man, Blade of Darkness, Hitman Codename 47. And that's about it. So I guess that's cue for me. All right, let's uh, let's see what I got. Or remember what I got. Uh, my trading store got a shit ton of Dreamcast stuff in, which was Ooh. great. And I got a couple of things. Well, a couple of other things are on hold, and 
by the time we do next podcast, I'll probably have those things on hold. But, uh, to start with, finally got Crazy Taxi for the Dreamcast. Cool. Now I can enjoy all three songs. <laughs> I by also... the Offspring? Yep. <laughs> um, I also picked up Soul Calibur. Of course. Fantasy Star Online version 2. And I got the web browser 2.0 for free. As a Yay. bonus. Yeah, I could totally use that, right? Didn't uh, one of the Dreamcast web browser discs have some sort of minigame on it you could play? Yeah, Sega Swirl. That came with 2.0. Yeah. My trade-in store had a bunch of 1.0s, but I'm like, why would I want that? And then I just get 2.0 for free. I'm like, oh, I've never seen 2.0. If, if I didn't get it for free, it would have been 99 cents. So <laughs> on the Super Nintendo sides of things, I got I got Super Castlevania 4. I'm not sure if I mentioned that last podcast. I don't think you did. All right, Super Castlevania 4. I also ended up getting um, Turtles in Time. And it came with... Um, and it came with a custom box, which looks nice, but the uh, art wasn't cut properly, so there's some white edges, but that's easily fixable. But it, it still looks fine for what it is. Uh, I think that's what I got from my trade-in store. Yesterday, I actually went to a flea market and got a couple of things. Uh, one of them being Super Punch-Out!, and also Batman Returns, both for Super Nintendo. Oh, right. Um, another thing I got out of the trade in store was Illusion of Gaia for Super Nintendo. I almost forgot about that. But um, I also managed to pick up at the flea market I went to a Game Boy camera and a Game Boy Color bundled together. So now I have a Game Boy Color. But I still think the Game Boy camera is really interesting now you need a game boy printer oh <laughs> well good luck finding the paper if you get the printer i think the paper is probably harder to find unless you can use you know the type of paper people use for receipts and shit i don't know how that works maybe unless it's spe very specific oh hang on give me a sec i gotta make sure i'm not forgetting anything Okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in another podcast, but there's just one other game that I did get, like, a few weeks ago. Uh, Pilot Wings. Hmm. Oh, and to the left of me, at the flea market, I just remembered, staring right at me, Pilot Wings 64 as well. Oh. Uh. Uh. Every time you say flea market, I get a little nervous and think that you got the interactor. <laughs> Oh, right, because I told you about that, right? Yeah, you told me an Interactor was there. I was still surprised. <laughs> but, um... I, I did get one other thing. Uh, and if I did, I'm just not going to bring it up. But... Oh, they're, they're, the flea market had a bunch of shit I would have got. If, if I go back next time, I'm getting two giant Megazords for zero. Because they're $12 each. Nice. Flea Market had no. a couple of games that I didn't get because I only had $60 on hand cash and I didn't know if they wanted cards. And basically, altogether, including the one thing I got that I didn't want to mention, altogether for $60. And I'm like, fucking perfect. That's all I brought. I would have gotten Ready to Rumble Boxing at that flea market for the Dreamcast. But the, the one person that ran that section wasn't there to unlock the uh, casing. So I couldn't get it. Oh. That, that, like, in that one specific spot, that was the one Dreamcast. I'm like, I'd want that. Like, I, I definitely grabbed that because the other two were, like, sports games that weren't interesting, you know? But that should be it for me. Okay, well, you talk about games sitting there staring at you in the face and you somehow forgetting them. I forgot this one that is sitting right next to me. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm still not sure why I convinced myself to get this, but I, on the SNES, I got Jim Lee's Wildcats Covert Action Teams. Which Wait, is, is that based, the Super Nintendo? Which is based on the 90s cartoon, 
which is based on the comic book by Jim Lee. That's the Super Nintendo game, right? Yeah, it's the side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Okay, so now I don't need to get it from my trade-in store to give it to you. Because <laughs> I it? saw it there, and I'm just like, God damn it, it exists? Isn't like, in good? game form? Is it a beat-em-up? Yeah, it's a beat-em-up. Yeah, I thought so, because I'm not sure what it would have been. I didn't test it. And I don't know if it's any good or not, because this arrived today. Like, a couple uh. hours ago. How much was it? Uh, it was like... Seven. Yeah, it seemed priced around there at my place. It wasn't that expensive at all. But I think that that's it. Let me make sure there's nothing else here I forgot. Okay, I think I'm safe. Oh! Uh, well, it's not a game pickup, so I guess I shouldn't mention it. No, I'll, I'll mention it later, since it's related to something else. I think I know what you're going to say, but let's just move on. Yes, let's. What, what, what are you talking about? You know, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, okay. No, 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 it's fine, Grandma. Let's put those little <laughs> things aside for now. No, no, don't put them there. No, All right. Do, why is your carpet wet? <laughs> Never mind that. We have to talk about E3. Never mind that shit. Here comes Microsoft. Oh, boy. Actually, before... Technically, before E3 started, there was... A sort of like mini press conference involving uh, the guys behind Witcher 3 and good old games. Oh, that was the thing? Yeah, they showed off Witcher 3 a bit and then good old games announced something called uh, Galaxy. Which, as far as I can tell, is some sort of like good old games version of Steam. I know that's oversimplifying it, but I wasn't really sure what to make of it. Yeah, it's supposed to be their game service, right? That's what they're calling it? Mm hmm. I haven't really been following that myself. But anyway, I just felt um, like mentioning that, but Unreal, feel free to guide us through E3. Yeah, okay, I'll just I'll just guide through it completely. I'll do all the conferences, all the all five of them. You have uh, the notes in order, I just have notes. Yep. And I have nothing. Alright, so I'll just fill you guys in. Um I'll just start with general thoughts before I go into detail about each conference. In general, Microsoft's conference wasn't bad. It was, like, for what it was worth, it was a good Microsoft conference. Which is actually saying a lot. Um, I'll just say right now, the biggest thing that made this conference good was that the Kinect was next to not mentioned at all. There was one very slight passing mention of Kinect being compatible with one game, and that was all that we heard of Kinect. No stage demonstrations, no Kinect bundles being advertised, that was it. Yep, this was, and this was an hour and a half conference, mind you, which was just impressive that they didn't even speak about it at all. Even though they didn't talk about the Kinect less bundle, but it did exist, and in fact, I think the day E3 started was when it finally went on sale, because I've seen non-connect bundles in stock um, at Best Buy, but I'll get to that. But um, in terms of the conference, let's uh, go in order with what they talked about. Um, first thing they showed was uh, the new Call of Duty, of and of course, it's a typical stage demo. At least they didn't end with it. I don't have too much to say about it. At least it's, um, at least it graphically looks improved, I guess. It, it exists. Well, it's just it, that it didn't make sense, though. Yep. I, I, that sounds about right. You have smart grenades, but you have to place an explosive by hand into the helicopter. Clearly, they're not smart enough. I don't know. Maybe it'll actually change th th uh, things up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not... I just don't know. Also, this is relevant. DLC is still a timed Microsoft exclusive because of course it is. Timed exclusives are not exclusives. Yep. That's pretty much thrown out quite a bit. Y you but know what else was a timed it. exclusive? Dead Rising 3. <laughs> yeah, that not too long before E3. Hey, PC version coming out. Hooray. We'll, we'll get to Dead Rising Hooray. in a bit. Um, 
next thing they talked about was uh, Forza related. They mentioned that there was a, a new track for Forza 5 and it's free. And when the conference happened, it pretty much came out during that time. So it's out now by the time we're talking about this or has been out. That was kind of a popular phrase with a lot of these conferences. And it's out now. We'll get to that. We'll get to the big one that did that in a bit. Uh, Forza related, they talked about Forza Horizon 2. It's coming out September 30th for the Xbox One. I don't care about Forza or Gran Turismo, so... Yeah. Yeah. Next thing, there was um, the new game made by the creators of Left 4 Dead, um, Evolve. They showed a little bit of that, well, in terms of like a trailer. But the beta and DLC will hit first on Xbox One. So, timed exclusive. Again. Any thoughts about that game in particular? Not really. I haven't really seen enough to say anything. It, it's it's pretty much four different classes versus giant monster, and the monster is a player character as well. If you saw more of it, it would make more sense, but... I mean, after, after Left 4 Dead, of course they'd want something sort of similar. It's like Left 4 Dead with Monster Hunter. Yeah, I'd say it's Left 4 Dead versus, except uh, the people that play as the Infected is a tank, and there's only one, and it's super powerful. That's the biggest comparison I could ever give it, I bet. Mm, um, I, can, I can dig it. I mean, yeah, I always liked Left 4 Dead, so... Then they showed the new Assassin's Creed. It's called Assassin's Creed Unity. It has four-player co-op. They showed gameplay. There you go. Where are all the white women at? Oh, right! <laughs> <laughs> right! Because they said... I had to. Fucking Ubisoft said that freaking... We can't have female assassins because it would take too much time to make. <sighs> oh, man. So explain Please to me enough. why. So explain to me why Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation makes you play as a strong, independent black slave woman. Whatever. Maybe the irony is that they gave all the money that was going to go into that development to Aisha Tyler. Oh. <laughs> uh, don't remind me that I saw Aisha Tyler on TV, and I'm like, no, where are you? You're back at Ubisoft. Fucking no. Uh, now we're gonna get to the one time Connect was mentioned. Um, Harmonix uh, talked about Dent Central Spotlight because, of course, they did. And the interesting thing about this, it's digital only and it's for Xbox One only. So it's not getting a physical release. And, I'm they, not didn't, <laughs> and they didn't do any sort of stage demo, which was refreshing. Yeah. They also briefly talked about Disney Fantasia, but almost gave like no fucking details also can i point out something that isn't going to show up in the notes go ahead throughout this conference they had these cutaways where uh like different developers and programmers for various things usually first party microsoft things we talk about like when they started playing games what their favorite games were who their favorite characters are and at the same time there were a couple of times during the conference where like microsoft people like phil spencer and whoever would turn to the camera and say thank you for like playing our games or some shit like that it all kind of reeked of like i don't know if ass kissing is the phrase i want to use but it really seemed like they were trying to kiss up to the people who were um buying the console for the games and at one point it just became way way over the top and just too much for me Oh, and how, like, anytime someone came on stage and said, My favorite game, Super Mario Kart. What, you can't fucking say that! You can't fucking say you like a Nintendo Sony game! Or how, like, later in the conference, Phil Spencer shows up and he's wearing a Limbo shirt. Or a different shirt, but that's what, but if I said the next shirt, that would pretty much reveal what would happen near the end of the conference. But, um, I want to go into detail about, um, Den Central Spotlight, because I just look this up uh, the game's coming with uh, a total of 10 songs which is starting to make more sense that they're making this download only because it's probably going to just be cheaper 
And of course, they're gonna have DLC. Like they usually do with that. And actually, the biggest news is um, DLC you purchased for the original three, uh, you'll get the new version for free when it's released. As in, like, adding new routines to it. So that's something. At least you're not getting completely screwed out. But that's that's all I know about that. Um, anyways, they showed more of uh, Insomniac's new game, Sunset Overdrive. And they basically introduced it by making fun of dark, gritty shooters. You know, like, the first thing we saw in this entire conference. And we would repeatedly see through all the conferences. Yes. Every single one. Well, not every single one, but okay, but... Uh, they, they at least showed gameplay for it this time. It looks like it could be pretty good, but... Again, it's Xbox One only, and... Y you know. And the main character looks like a douche. Yuri Lowenthal, and you get to play as Danny the Panda saving the world. Now, we're back onto the topic with Dead Rising 3. They showed a trailer for its new fucking absolutely ridiculous DLC. Uh, let me, let me say, let me say the fucking name. Give me a second. We're going to be here a while. Yeah, we're going to, we are. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> right about this. Uh, guys, I hope you're ready for Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. Yep, that's the title of it. Um, yep. This DLC is exclusive for Xbox One, but then it'll probably go into PC. Uh, and it's basically four-player online co-op and a bunch of Capcom stuff thrown in. It's basically ridiculous. And... The biggest thing was, it's available now! Yeah, because that worked out so well for the Sega Saturn, right? I guess so. Um, but yeah, the DLC came out during the conference. By the way, no Mega Man in that DLC. Just a serve bot head. Wasn't like Felicia or something in that? Ooh! I don't know who that is, I'm sorry. The cat oh, girl from Darkstalkers. Oh, Darkstalkers? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. Well, that's the closest we're getting to a Darkstalkers game, then. Yep, <laughs> I guess so. Um, that, it's like that's Capcom it. is making fun of themselves. And all the while, they just released another Street Fighter 4. Yeah. yeah. They actually did. Um, I think the next game is an indie game. It's called Ori in the Blind Forest. It's an Xbox One exclusive, and yeah, it does look like an indie game. I don't know too much about it, but it's a platformer, and it'll probably be good. Probably. I just don't know too much about it, but that was shown there. Um, the next thing they showed was Project Spark. They oh showed a trailer. Oh, they, no. they showed this thing last year. In fact, I, I keep I think Project Spark is actually a thing that's out now. I think. I mean. It, like if it's if it's out and I didn't know about it, then that's well, that's something. But Project Spark also led to the biggest fuck you of the entire Microsoft conference. Yeah. Like the absolute fucking worst. So, Rare is dead. Rare's been dead. Rare's basically in hell right now. Uh. <laughs> oh boy. So. Conker comes and fucking cuts the Project Spark logo in half. Says a bunch of shit like, hey, haven't had a game in a while. Guess we're gonna have to make our own. Derpy derpy do. And the entire announcement of that was, hey, Conker's in Project Spark. Not a new Conker game, because he's gonna be a Project Spark, so make your own fucking game. Actually, fuck you. Yeah. Ugh. I think that made all of us mad when we were watching E3. It's just like, come on. I don't remember if I was hearing booing or if I was doing the booing. I think we were all doing it both ways. I could watch over the recording and see which, <laughs> to see exactly what we said. Actually, no, we all said fuck you. Uh, <laughs> the next thing they talk about, and oh man, I'm gonna feel like a big scrub talking about this. This actually, this actually is fucking good. 
This is something I'm liking. Well, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me, but they fucking revealed that the rumored Halo Master Chief Collection, which I'm permanently dubbing the Master Chef Collection. <laughs> and I'm honestly happy with this bundle. I don't know why. I think the biggest thing I'm happy about is that Halo 2 Anniversary is a fucking thing. But there's so much more in terms of this bundle that they're doing that's making me go, oh shit, this is a fucking great bundle. Like, they have Halo 1 Remastered, which is Halo 1 Anniversary, which we already got on 360. We're getting Halo 2 Anniversary. We're getting Halo 3. And we're getting Halo 4. Notice how I didn't say Halo 3 Anniversary, which is making me think they're not gonna upscale Halo 3 at all or anything for the Xbox One, and just do a straight um, 60 FPS uh, 1080p port of that. At least with Halo 4, there's an excuse, because it's super recent and probably the better looking, but Halo 2 is a game that obviously needed a graphical update, and they're doing it exactly like Halo 1 Anniversary. But the biggest fucking news that made me happy was they're keeping each separate multiplayer intact. Which is, oh man, I it made me happy and I, 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 I'm mad because it's on the Xbox One. Like, the fact that this thing is making me consider an Xbox One two years down the line, by the way, because I'm still planning for a PS4 first. I don't know if I, I should feel complete scrub about it. Because, you know, it's Halo and shit, remember? You're not allowed to like it. You're not allowed to like games, you know? Because both of you, you don't, you guys don't give a shit. I don't know. I thought the first Halo was pretty okay, but that's the only one I played. Because <laughs> that came out on PC with custom edition and shit. Yeah. Honestly, this is this is good news. Although, since it's the Master Chief Collection, no Reach or ODST included. But, whatever. ODST we can live without, I suppose. Or, according to other people, Reach we can li live without. But, overall, this is actually a great bundle. They're planning to price this for $60, which, considering what you're getting, it's like an insane <clears throat> deal. But, yeah, to the people that already have an Xbox One, uh, this is actually really fucking good. Unless you don't like Halo, then it's like, well, what do I do? I, I didn't want to spend too long on it, but I, I just had to get that out, that this, this is actually a good bundle. And this is how HD Remix should be fucking done. Actually remaster the graphics instead of removing fog and making everything worse, like Silent Hill. Well, after that, they show Dragon Age Inquisition. It's a trailer. It's a new Dragon Age game. It's probably going to be better than Dragon Age 2, so I guess that's the plus. Yet another RPG I won't play. Scott, you've been quiet. I that haven't really had much to say. Yeah. Yep, we're going to be here a while. Uh, I was thinking I was being strangely talkative, but yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not used to pretty much hosting this shit. Uh, Fable Legends is a new Fable game. It has co-op and it has Blue Shrek <laughs> and some other things. I don't give a shit about Fable. Do they confirm farting in people's faces? I don't know. <laughs> All I just know is Angry Joe may or may not flail around the screen and say fuck this game. <laughs> They killed my son! They killed my son named Joe! Fuck this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't care about the guy much, but I can respect uh, what he, what he's trying to say sometimes. Then, then, um, Phil Spencer came out with the Limbo shirt by this time, because the creators of Limbo are making a new game. It's, it's just called Inside. Well, I'm wondering, is this an Xbox, um, exclusive? I don't know. Yeah, as a, apparently right now it's just like, oh, it's coming out in 2015. We don't know if it's an Xbox exclusive or not, but we just know it's going to be on Xbox One. And speaking of quote unquote exclusive, uh, the new Tom Clancy game, The Division, 
had a trailer and its new content will be first on Xbox One. Wow. Just gotta get it first, because people can be impatient, because fuck people. And, oh, what's this next announcement? I have to look into this. Oh, what came up next was a bunch of indie games. Pretty much showing off their ID at Xbox. That's what they're calling it. And there's a long list of games. One of them actually includes Mighty Number no. 9, but I, but we pretty much knew about that from the Kickstarter, because it reached that goal. But I'm not getting it for the Xbox One. I already fucking put it down for the Wii U during the Kickstarter. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going into too much detail, but there's just a ton of um, indie games for Xbox One. Take it that as what what you will or something, you know? Oh, there was another thing they mentioned alongside the Master Chef collection. Uh, if you get the Master Chef collection, you can get into the Halo 5 beta. Also, the trailer made Halo 5 look like it was going to be extreme future football. But whatever. Uh, they showed the Witcher 3 gameplay. So there's that. If you like The Witcher, it should be good. But you're going to be getting it for PC regardless. Eh. Eh. Then Ken Lobb came out. You know, the one guy from Rare that's, you know, still left with Rare. Uh, he teased uh, Killer Instinct uh, Season 2. They didn't show anything about Killer Instinct Season 2 at the conference, but they did release a trailer for one of the new characters. As in, like, coming to the to the new game. It's a returning character, TJ Combo! So basically, he came out and teased the other half of the game. Oh, man. It's probably too forced at this point. Who knows? It'll probably be, like, multiple seasons. Oh, that makes me scared. I do want to mention, at the end of the TJ Combo trailer, and, and they did this for many other trailers, that they teased the next character they're going to reveal... This trailer's implying that Cinder, the most fucking broken character in franchise history, is coming back. Oh man, they better keep that turkey voice, or it's not gonna be a good reboot. Whoa! Gobble, gobble, gobble! Oh jeez. If it actually is Cinder, keep- oh man, I don't even know. If it is Cinder, I'm convinced this is an entirely new continuity. Cause isn't he supposed to be dead? They're probably gonna just bullshit and say, oh, we made another one. It's Cinder, but not really. Kind of like how Fulgore is Fulgore, but not really, because they're... Because, because Ultra Tech. Because Fulgore is Thunder's brother, except they implied that Spinal was supposed to be Thunder's brother, and then everything's just out of order. Or they'll just bring Idol back. Wait, Killer Instinct had a story? Just like with most fighting games, super minimal. And it's like most fighting games. It has end. a story, but it does a shit job of telling it. Yeah, it's like, hey, beat your fucking tournament ladder. Here's your story. Why is there a oh, tournament? What? Never mind that. Nope. But yeah, watch them bring Idol back. I still can't believe we did that. Billy Idol. Like, what the fuck? I guess it was maybe relevant back in whatever. No, but it wasn't. Ken Law, yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> But okay, um, Ken Lobb also announced one other thing that they showed with a CG trailer. There is, um, I'm actually trying to wonder, did Sony or Microsoft have more CG trailers? I th they could have had an equal amount for all I know. It's a close call. Maybe. Uh, but this one is probably the most interesting one, because they're rebooting Phantom Dust, that one original Xbox game that pretty much had a cult following, but sold like shit, which is why it's called following. I actually got the game at last year's Anime North and only played a little bit of it, but I've heard of the game before, so this was actually kind of surprising. But will they fuck this reboot up? I don't know. All we just know it's it, it's coming back. But that was definitely cool news. Um, then they showed another CG trailer for uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. That title is so fucking dumb. Because any anytime I see Rise of the Tomb Raider, I just think to the Sega CD game Rise of the Dragon. Which actually was not originally a Sega CD game, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, that's like, I remember seeing it on Sega CD. Because, well, I'm pretty sure it was also on like other things, but I just 
but it is Final but Fantasy. As for the Tomb Raider thing, at least they didn't just call it Tomb Raider 2. I'm just gonna call it Waifu Beater. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> how many more ways can we Waifu beat in this game? I don't know. Then, then friggin' Hideki Kamiya came out on stage and looked like he did not want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why am I at fucking Microsoft? But he revealed a CG trailer for his Xbox One exclusive game from Platinum Games. It's called Scalebound. Also in the trailer, it looked like fucking white-haired, not Dante. I'm like, what the fuck, really? <laughs> so weird. That's like another weird looking Dante guy. Okay. I, well, I don't know. I don't know what the game's supposed to be like. Yeah, until you mentioned that, I completely forgot that happened. Yeah. But I mean, since it's a platinum game, it's probably going to be good. But I don't know uh, too much about it aside from the uh, CG trailer. And the last thing they showed is. Well, they revealed a new Crackdown game. They're just calling it Crackdown. So we got Crackdown, Crackdown 2, and Crackdown. I'm chronologically confused. Prepare to hear that a lot in this podcast. Because I'm chronologically confused Phantom Dust and Crackdown right now. Oh, man. Whatever. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering why they still do the thing where they reboot a series and they don't bother to give it a different name, so it just gets confusing as fuck. I mean, I would say I'm chronologically confused with Assassin's- no, fuck it. I'm chronologically confused with Assassin's Creed, because there's one, two, Brotherhood, Revelations, not misspelled like Resident Evil, uh, three, then, then four, Black Flag, and then Unity. Well, I guess that's in the order it goes, but if if you just, like, glanced at it, I'm like, what order does this go in? Who cares? The story's shit anyway. Whatever. Shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> right. The last thing I want to say about Crackdown, if, if they're actually rebooting Crackdown, how come the Halo 5 beta isn't coming with Crackdown? Because that's what they yeah, did was, with Crackdown 1. I, I was thinking 1. that earlier, too. I mean, that would have been funny as shit. It's like, Halo 5 beta, put it with Crackdown. Kind of like what we did with Halo 3 and Crackdown 1. And that's pretty much what happened at Microsoft. In terms of revealing games and stuff, it was a good conference. I mean, liking Microsoft notwithstanding, or hating Microsoft notwithstanding, in general, it was a good conference, and definitely better than last year's and previous years. So, I'll give it that. Any thoughts on all that shit? Not really. I don't own an Xbox, so... I mean... It was okay? I wouldn't call it bad. Not yeah. by any stretch, but... The, the only super bad thing was that Conquer bullshit. <laughs> oh, that, the that, Conquer that, thing that, was terrible. That was fucking bad! Uh, otherwise... Okay conference? I mean, the main problem with it is... One, the kissing up that I mentioned earlier. And, uh... To a lot of the games that they showed, not really exclusives. Yeah, that that's definitely one detriment to the whole thing. Um, about the whole kissing up thing, yeah, I see what you mean, but I'd rather take kissing up over flat out douchebaggery. It seems better in the long run, because if douchebaggery pretty much happened during the conference like it has probably the previous years, then I probably would have hated it. Like well, I here, did here's the thing, too. If they cut out those sections, they could have teased, like, two more projects. But then again, what if they didn't have any? That's pretty much... Well, we got If they didn't have anything 30. beyond what they showed at E3, they're fucked. I guess so. But again, I'm pretty sure there's, like, more stuff being announced after the conferences, like most of them do, but barely gonna go into that, because we'd be here forever. And we'll probably find out more info down the line, you know. Okay, so already that was been like, here a while. Yeah, because that was basically an hour and 30 minutes summed up. At least EA and Ubisoft are shorter. So we'll just go straight into EA. Um, first thing they showed was a little bit of the new Star Wars Battlefront. Not gameplay, mind you, just early 
footage concept stuff while the developers were talking. This happened a lot in the EA conference. I'm a little let down. At least we're knowing that they're still working on it. But, uh, I mean, it'll probably come out in 2016 at this point. Or if they rush it, it comes out this year and it's garbage. But, <laughs> uh, the next, oh, jeez, I, I fucking completely forgot this next thing. The Sims 4? You remember how they presented this, right? No. Okay. Uh... okay. Akago, I know you didn't watch the, uh, the conferences, so... Oh, prepare for this. Uh, with The Sims 4, the first thing I remember hearing was this loud fucking scream, and it caught me off guard. I'm like, what the fuck was that? It was like a loud girl scream. You remember that, Scott, right? What the fuck was that? I think that was just someone in the crowd. Why? <laughs> I don't know, but I remember hearing it a couple more times, albeit not as loud as that. Oh. So, they, they, they basically played out a story thingy that they made in, in terms of The Sims. Like, follow the, like this guy's life, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going into detail about it. So, basically what they were showing was, well, The Sims 4 allows you to create uh, and define personalities for each Sim or something like that. Um, the dumbest thing was right after that, where this guy came out and said, All the feels, don't you have all the feels? And I'm like, can we just stop watching this? I, I just want to stop this conference right now. <laughs> it made even worse when the fucking Sims Twitter tweeted about the fucking feels thing. I gotta thank Chip Cheesem for pointing that out to me, and, and I kind of wish he didn't because I'm now mad because I fucking remember it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the developers need to stay away from memes. Oh, tell that to Watch Dogs. Oh! Uh, fuck. Uh, then they showed stuff... Uh, well, not stuff, but... They showed concept footage for new Mass Effect in a new thing BioWare's working on. Again, in a similar vein to what they did with the Battlefront thing. So they didn't show much. They just said, hey, we're going to go for another Mass Effect and we're going to go with something new as well. That's it. Whatever. Then, <clears throat> sports. Because, of course, there's a new PGA Tour game There's that has some fantasy shit as an option where you can shoot your balls at battleships. I'm not making this up. Uh, they showed NHL 15, okay, sports. They showed Madden 15, okay, sports. FIFA 15, okay, sports. And I think that was all the sports. No NBA. And no celebrities either. No, no fucking uh, Dwayne Johnson, no Charles Barkley coming out on stage, none of that. And believe me, we were expecting that, and it, and it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Dwayne Johnson like The Rock? Oh fuck, did I actually say the fuck? You know, whatever, that would have counted anyway. Probably EA takes up the WWE like since but and still make it glitchy as shit. Yeah, I was about to say, because uh, you didn't mention any wrestling games or anything. <laughs> yeah, there was no wrestling, Sean, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, sports, sports, sports. The one thing I was looking forward to, uh, anything new about Mirror's, the new Mirror's Edge, and they did the same thing they did with Battlefront. Show early footage and talk about it. So at least they're still developing it. But that was all they showed. Uh, uh. You forgot something on the sports front. What did I miss? UFC. I don't care. I don't care if you have dead Bruce Lee in your fucking game. Why do you have dead Bruce Lee in your fucking game? Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, yes! Bruce Lee is Bruce going to be in the next UFC. Ugh. Oh boy. I, yeah, that wasn't listed on here, but I'm glad you brought it. I'm not glad you brought it up, but for the sake of recap, I'm glad you brought it up. Oh, speaking of shit I don't care about, Dawn Gate, a MOBA. Akiko, do you play MOBAs? No. Not even the Adventure Time one? Yeah, that's no. a thing, apparently. <laughs> I've heard of it, but no, I don't play that. Okay, then, 
Uh, like, I mean, we already got MOBAs that already have established fan bases, and I don't give a shit about any of them. So why do we need another to compete with? It's just... Like... Ugh! Whatever. Then Criterion talked about a new IP. If you don't know who Criterion is, they made Burnout. Oh, those guys, yeah. And basically the whole time, they of course, they were just talking about it via developer stuff by showing a bunch of vehicles they were driving around and shit. So basically during this point of the E3 conference, we were joking about what kind of Burnout game it would be. Burnout helicopters, burnout fucking ATV, burnout suicide because there were wingsuits. And we were thinking, burnout suicide, just crash into the mountain and die. <laughs> Wingsuit simulator 2015. But we don't know much about what it's going to be. It's just, well, there's vehicles and speed. So, whatever. And, and the last notable thing at EA was another Battlefield game, mainly a spin-off. It's Battlefield Hardline, which we knew a little bit about before E3, because it kind of got leaked, because everything gets leaked. It, it, and we saw a tr like a quote-unquote gameplay trailer for it, or just like rifted gameplay, of how it would be like to play Battlefield Hardline. It's, it's essentially cops and robbers. And I could base, and I'll just say right now, it could be fun. Like, at least it's not another war that Battlefield always goes for. Cops and Robbers, like, why not? It's a spinoff, and it seems like it can actually work. And the same time of the conference, they released um, the beta for PlayStation 4 and PC. So if you want to look up beta gameplay, it's available. Unless EA is like, oh, oh, you can't see that shit. Get it out of here. But that's all that happened at EA's conference. It was lame. Their, their conference was fucking lame. Like, all the stuff they showed gameplay-wise were sports that we don't care about. And the interesting stuff <sighs> didn't really have gameplay. Just early, early alpha stuff. Well said, SCR. Yeah, uh, it, it was an hour, but I'm just like, it, it should have been shorter. At least Ubisoft was a little more entertaining. <laughs> Aisha Tyler hosted the event again. Third time in a row. If you don't know who that is, it's the black chick who ruined Whose Line Is It Anyway. Oh, fuck. Was she ho Is she the new host? I think so. <sighs> I mean, it's not like they could get Drew Carey. He's busy on Price is Right. But it, it still has Colin Mockery and what's his face, right? The dynamic duo. I don't know. I stopped watching. Mm. We'll just look up clips on YouTube during the Drew Carey era, and then we'll laugh again. But, okay, Ubisoft, they pretty much, um, uh, they showed Far Cry 4. The trailer they showed was basically a cutscene showing the new villain. They did the same thing with Far Cry 3, although this villain probably won't be as good. Cross that off your bingo card. Another thing to cross off your bingo card, Just Dance 2015. Because, of course. And they also revealed something called Just Dance Now, which is so like a phone app, so you can play Just Dance anywhere-ish if you hook it up to, like, a screen or TV or something. I don't know. I don't really care. And Do you then... guys care? Do you guys care at all? The people on stage who are dancing seem to care, I think. Yet no flow writer. I missed that criticism microphone shield. <laughs> uh, but that that was so stupid. But yeah, hell, no celebrities during Ubisoft's either. It's like they didn't have the budget, or they just said like, you know, that's pretty fucking stupid. Let's not do that. But um, they talked about their racing game, The Crew, a little bit more. Um, you could sign up for the beta. They showed the division again, except instead of gameplay that the sh which they showed at Microsoft, it was a CG trailer. Although with Assassin's Creed Unity, they showed another gameplay trailer and showed a release date of October 28th. Okay. One of the more unique games they showed was um, Valiant Hearts, which runs on the um, UbiArt engine, which is the engine that ran... Um, Rayman Legends, and it's it's a World War One themed game, 
And I think that may have been the most interesting thing they showed there at their conference. Mm -hmm. Maybe because so, it just stood out. So it's a 2D game? Yeah, it's a 2D-ish game. And it's apparently based off of uh, real-life uh, World War One letters that were sent. Oh. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it's definitely the most interesting game they showed there. Actually, I shouldn't say the most inter- No, it's the most interesting, but the most ridiculous one. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Of course they had to fill this quota. It may have been- Oh, man. Okay, so there's this new game. It's called... Um... It's called Shape Up. I don't... Is this a Kinect game? I still don't understand if it's a Kinect game. I assume like Kinect or whatever the Sony camera thing is. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. I just looked it up a little bit more. Yeah, this is a Kinect game. Because it said Xbox One. And apparently just for Xbox One. So... Um, <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to go into detail because it's better if you just look it up and watch yourself. I implore you. Um, I, Scott, I, like, do me a favor when you upload this, please put a description to the specific part of E3 in the description because you need to see it. Okay. But if, if you want me to describe it, it's a Kinect game. Oh, gee, I can't even describe it in words. That's how fucking weird it was. It's an arcade style fitness game, I guess. Yeah, but the one thing I could definitely describe is when one guy with an ascot, yes, a fucking ascot, and this other guy had a push-up contest, and there was a, just a bunch of virtual shit stacked on their goddamn backs. It's fucking ridiculous. It needs to be seen to be believed. What and was I think it that was again. Shape up. Uh, Look it up later, Akago, and you'll go. What the fuck? Maybe. It was. Do I want to say that was their highlight? Okay, I gotta say it was their highlight just for how fucking ridiculous it was. And the last thing they sh showed, um, they showed. I I guess it was gameplay because like during E3 they had people actually play uh, this next game, but. It's new Rainbow Six game. It's called Rainbow Six Siege. I was surprised, mainly because the the Rainbow Six game that we've heard about for a while, Patriots, basically at that moment, effectively got canceled. And this is confirmed. They canceled Patriots and said, you know, fuck it, we're gonna make a different one. Here's Rainbow Six Siege. And the, the stuff they mainly showed in that uh, whole gameplay thing is multiplayer. There's still going to be single player, blah, blah, blah. But there's a new Rainbow Six game coming out. And will it be canceled like Patriots? Mm, I don't know. Maybe this one will actually come out. And that sums up Ubisoft. It was more lively than EA's. So that's better, I guess. Scott, what were your thoughts on the Ubisoft stuff? <sighs> okay. I concur. So, the next conference of that Monday, because Nintendo went on Tuesday with their digital event, uh, was Sony's. Theirs was easily the longest. It was about, like, two hours-ish. So, I really want to try and speed through this, because I don't want to make this drag on, you know? So, the first thing they showed was Destiny because that they're pretty much pushing Destiny on the PS4, even though it's multi-platform. Um, interesting, though, they revealed a, a new PlayStation 4 bundle that comes with Destiny, and it's a white PlayStation 4. Which, according to a newspaper article, is being made by Nintendo. Right, yeah! The LA Times actually thought the white PlayStation 4 was a Nintendo console. Ugh, old people. Cowboy Bebop at his computer. I, th I think I actually have the magazine that fucking had that article a ago. I honestly think I do, because I remember seeing it in an actual fucking magazine. Oh, if I still have it. That, that's beyond the point. Cowboy Bebop when I'm blasted at my computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to Destiny. It's also, 
you can also play it first on PlayStation because they have an alpha going on. And I actually saw a bit of the alpha um, footage because one of my friends was actually streaming it because he has a PS4. I swear to God, I think Destiny is running on the fucking Halo Reach engine because it seriously seems like it. But whatever. Uh, both alpha and beta available on PlayStation first and stuff. Or I guess just the beta is exclusive to PlayStation, but whatever. I may be getting that wrong, but point is you can play Destiny first on PlayStation before it's even finished. Um, but I do want to go back to the bundle. Uh, that may be the bundle I'm getting because a white PlayStation 4 doesn't sound too bad because I'm honestly overstocked with black consoles now, except for the original Wii. That's what the Wii used for. So having a white PlayStation wouldn't be too bad. And it, it would come out later in the year enough where I'd say, you know, I guess there's enough stuff out for the PlayStation 4. Or I could completely 180 and just go, you know what? All this money, gonna build my own PC. I'm still debating between it. Um, Sucker Punch announced more infamous stuff, but it's mainly Second Sun DLC that is standalone, so you don't need the game to play that. I like, I like that, where you don't need the fucking game to play standalone DLC, that is good. But will the DLC be good? I don't know. And another thing they released during the conference was a downloadable game called Entwined. What was that game about? I know what it looked it's about like. Two that. souls who love each other but can never be together. Beyond Two Souls? Oh. <laughs> No, thankfully, there is no Ellen Page here. There, Well, no David Cage writing, so that's even better. <laughs> I was about to say, nothing wrong with Ellen Page. Yeah, it's just... Uh, uh, then came something completely abrupt. It, and I mean abrupt. Like, immediately after, all that just pops up on stage is Little Big Planet 3. And, and the crowd just goes like, whoa! And I was like, whoa, because I'm like, well, that's fucking abrupt. You just, like, no build up. Just, hey, here's Little Big Planet 3. And I found out that Media Molecule is not making Little Big Planet 3. So keep that in mind. These are different developers. However, these developers are apparently getting feedback and stuff from Media Molecule. Kind of like how Rockstar got feedback from Remedy about Max Payne 3. I guess that's how it's going to work, because Max Payne 3 ended up being good. Depends on who you ask, but I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I actually went backwards in the series, so I think Max Payne 3 did his job. I was like, hey, let's play the other ones. Then they showed a trailer for From Software's new game, which before E3 was no simply known as Project Beast. Right, Fafi? Your game of the fucking show? Is it going to be the game of the show? Because you like the Souls game so much? But it's not a Souls game, it's just called Bloodborne. But from what I've seen, it plays like a fucking Souls game. And it's apparently going to come out next year. Prepare to see that a lot too. 2015 releases up the wazoo. Across every conference, no less. Like, either we get stuff this year or we get a lot of exciting stuff next year. Or never. They showed a quote-unquote gameplay trailer for The Order 1886. Oh, mm. it's this ain't fucking gameplay. This, like, uh, I'd go on for hours about how much the Order 1886 is failing to be a fucking game. This is like if you tried taking heavy rain and adding more action to it. Like, say what you want about The Last of Us, but it seems like it gives you more control than what the Order 1886 is showing so far. Whatever. Uh, then, oh, this next announcement was my, well, I don't want to say it's the lowest point of the conference. I know what the lowest point or the boring port, uh, point was, but this made me mad. Dead Island 2 exists. They showed a trailer and then it's Dead Island 2 because, uh, fuck Dead Island 1. <laughs> I don't, uh, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Dead Island 1. And then I played it. It's like, how did this even get out onto store shelves in the, in the state you were in? Because driving full speed underwater in a truck with no repercussions, I think, yeah, okay. Stretchy Armstrong zombie crashing my Xbox, perfect. 
fucking perfect. Scott, you played Dead Island also. Yeah, I pretty much stopped after I played Wave Race with the trucks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man, I stopped after Stretchy Armstrong crashed my Xbox. But yeah, I, I, I was just kind of mad that Dead Island 2 exists. I mean, you never know. Maybe it'll be improved and actually, you know, functional. But I'm, I don't have any hopes up right now. At least the trailer is a little more self-aware instead of being super serious like the first one. It's li at least they're like, well, Dead Island 1 never became a super serious game. Fuck it, we're not gonna try. The Last of Us creatures, clickers and shit, are going to be enemies in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls on PS4. Okay. So, uh, whatever. I guess so if you get bit by them once, the screen goes black and you gotta start the dungeon over? Oh boy, that's that's like super hard mode. Uh, this is this was actually probably one of the bigger surprises during the conference. Um, Grim Fandango is getting remastered for the PlayStation 4 and Vita. Fuck yeah! Ah! <laughs> Sorry. No. Oh. Requisite uh, PC gamer moment. Could couldn't resist. But believe believe me, that was that was really surprising. Like, whoa, what? What? That's awesome! Kinda sucks that it's on PS4, so it's on a system that I don't yet have, but... And Vita. It's cool is, that it's getting a re-release either way. Which is a handheld that no way. one has. Oh. Yeah, and Vita. But it's cool that it's getting a re-release either way, so... Though we'll have to wait and see uh, how far they'll go to kind of uh, remaster it, I guess. Well, Tim Schafer's basically in Double Finder, basically behind the project, so... It'll probably turn out being good. Uh, Let's hope so. Yep. But believe me, if, if it ended up being a bad remaster, Double Fine would never live it down. Easy yeah, easy. but uh, it's kind of sad that out of all the stuff at E3, that's the thing I'm most excited about, and it's a re-release of a game that I'm probably not going to buy anyway because I already have the PC version. Uh, we're... Uh, back to Far Cry 4, they but showed... that might just be me, sorry. Yeah, back to Far Cry 4, they, uh, showed actual, they showed gameplay this time, but the biggest thing there was that, um, this, like, they showed co-op, but the biggest interesting thing was it will allow co-op with friends who don't own the game. I don't know how that's gonna work, but that's cool, because it reminds me of how... Nintendo and their DSs have done download play. So, I, I really don't know how that's gonna work. But ju just the idea is cool enough. I just don't know how limiting it'll be and stuff. There's probably gonna be plenty of limitations. Who knows? But we'll just see when Far Cry 4 comes out. Also, M Magicka got a sequel. That was revealed. That co-op PC game that I have but have it installed, because apparently I can't run it? Eh. I don't know, but that was actually not bad news either. Because when did Magicka 1 come out? I don't even remember. Mm. The only thing I know about that game is that my friends kept going on about it, and I thought it looked not like my kind of game, let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Danny g gave us a couple of copies. I think sh I think I was one of them. I don't remember how I got Magico, but it but may have I'm, been Danny. And, but then I'm one of those motherfuckers who thinks uh, stuff like Monster Hunter looks boring as hell, too. <gasps> okay, podcast over. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry. That's, it, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, no Man's Sky, they showed more of that, and it's gonna have its console debut on PS4. Console I'm debut. I'm really happy that game's finally coming to fruition, especially after what happened to the developer. Yeah, like, like after that flood, damn, but they're back on their feet, Wait, so that's what? good. Uh, the, the Hello Games, the guys that made No Man's Sky, uh, their studio got flood, like flooded at some point, and they lost quite a bit of shit. Ooh, that's bad. But the fact that they're showing stuff at E3 means that I'm pretty sure they're back on track. That's good. I just forget what they lost in the flood, but 
but it still sucks regardless. Then there, there was a couple of other indie games, uh, specifically from Devolver Digital Games, and PlayStation is getting exclusive console debuts, like Broforce, which I played Bro Broforce on my brother's PC. It's fucking ridiculous. I, I, I forget the actual uh, games they show, but Broforce was one of them. Uh, I think they also showed how the new Hotline Miami. Yeah, that, w that was in there, definitely. Because they revealed uh, the okay. uh, level editor for that, I uh, heard something about that at least. Yeah, Bro Force, Titan Souls, Naughty Hero, Hotline Miami 2, and the Talos Principle. So, yeah, that'll be coming to PlayStation 4 console wise first. Since, of course, it's already most likely on PC right now, especially Bro Force, because early access. Uh, there's a new game from the developer Giant Squid. I don't know what Giant Squid has made, but this game is called Abzu. But yeah, that, that was announced. Then Suda51's uh, next game got announced, and it's exclusive to PS4, known as Let It Die. And recently, I found out this is a free-to-play game. So there's that. Then something came up with uh, Sony and Disney. Part They're having a partnership for Disney Infinity 2. Because, you know... Oh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was listed on here, but one moment that happened during the fucking... <laughs> during the conference, long after I think the Disney Infinity thing happened, the audio for Hulk Smash played during the conference, and it caught everyone off guard. <laughs> Hulk Smash? Hulk Smash is right. <laughs> At, at least he co at least uh, Adam Boyce covered that like a pro. He's like, Hulk Smash? Hulk Smash is right. <laughs> at least it's not like EA where it's like, oh, Hulk Smash, guess you'll see it later. Uh, uh, there's a couple of free-to-play Vita titles coming out, and apparently Fat Princess is uh, one of them. Like, I I'm not sure about title specifics, but I, I think one of the surprising things about this entire sony conference was that they're still acknowledging the vita but anyways that's enough about vita for a little bit um uh the ps4 share capturing feature is now gonna have youtube support uh later this year and that streaming service playstation now the open beta is coming out july 31st so there's that and another interesting announcement this is also vita ish re related um the PlayStation TV is coming to US and Canada this fall, and it's $99. For those who don't know what that was, um, in Japan, they released something called the PlayStation Vita TV. We didn't think it was coming stateside. Now it is. So, how about that? I guess that'll be a way to record some Vita games. I say some because not all Vita games are going to be supported, which sucks this is the same problem with the japanese one where if there was like touch screen shit on like a vita game you most likely can't record it so there you go then came the most boring part of the conference they talked about a playstation tv series called powers i mean i'm i'm not, I'm not like mad at them for talking about it but they could have spent a little less time on it yeah, this went way too long. What kind of series is it even? It's, it's based series. upon a uh, comic series, which is about two private investigators who specifically investigate crimes involving powers. Which, powers meaning superheroes, supervillains. So, like, if the most powerful supervillain in the city winds up dead in a sewer grate somewhere, they investigate, like, what happened there. So... Okay. They're not investigating Austin Powers. Yeah, okay, but it's a TV series? Yeah, exclusive for PlayStation. I'm not sure if it's going to... I'm uh, assuming this is going to be a thing that's broadcasted on PlayStation only. You know, like the tester, <clears throat> but... Uh, so it's kind of like a Netflix original series, but on PlayStation. Kind of. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of getting. But after that, they showed Mortal Kombat X gameplay. It's Mortal Kombat... But, and another thing is, they showed a brief trailer for a Ratchet and Clank film. So, yeah, there's gonna be a Ratchet and Clank movie. I, I guess it's, I guess it's something. 
Uh, and apparently the movie's gonna come out um, early 2015 or the first half. And they're also um, going to remake the first Ratchet and Clank for PS4. Which is odd, because they had an HD collection for PlayStation 3. So... I, I guess they mean actually remaking it and actually redoing textures and shit instead of... Oh, upscale. HD collection. Well, whatever. Uh, speaking of remastering, The Last of Us Remastered is coming out on PlayStation 4 July 29th. That was news. But there, the bigger... Oh, shit. The bigger news uh, was that Grand Theft Auto V is getting ported to the PlayStation 4 and coming out this year. Now, believe me, I was mad at first, but because I thought it was just going to be PS4 only. But then, of course, there'd be no way. It'd be stupid if Rockstar did it only for that. And then I looked it up. It's also coming to the Xbox One and the PC. Just the fact that it's being ported to the PC makes me, a guy that can't run PC games, happy. Because I just know, some, somewhere, someday, when it comes out, the Ed Edinetti mod is going to be real. That's all I fucking want. I just want that mod to exist. And it better be done right. But still on the topic of GTA 5, the, the most interesting note came with GTA Online saves, where um, you could actually transfer PS3 and Xbox 360 saves to the PlayStation 4. Which actually makes sense, considering how the Grand Theft Auto Online saves work. Because they're not tied to your system, they're tied to Rockstar's cloud servers. So, it of course makes sense that it's, transfer it's easy to transfer those online saves. Hell, I'm pretty sure you could even transfer it to the PC version if you wanted to. I mean, I mean, I figured that it'd be possible because I lost my one character near launch because of how the cloud servers were fucking up. So, at least it's something. They also showed uh, gameplay of the new Batman game. By the way, it's coming January 2015. Thanks, Batman. <laughs> But yeah, new Batman seems like it'll be cool, but the most most of the stuff they showed wasn't combat. It was mostly they showed the city, which looked cool. They showed the Batmobile a bit. And they only had like one very 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 quick instance of combat, which was just like a triple takedown thing. And that's it. And then Batman reaches the penguin and the entire stage freaks out with lights and shit and Scarecrow basically hijacks the trailer. That's what happened. So, see, it'll probably be better than Origins, but that should be an easy thing to do. Now I'm gonna have to pick up the Arkham games, because Scarecrow was one of my favorite Batman villains. Oh, then you, yeah, yeah. Asylum. Yeah. Play Asylum. Yeah, 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 and Uncharted 4 is a thing. What made me happy about the Uncharted 4 trailer was that Soli was talking in it. That's all I needed. <laughs> why, is, why is Soli the fucking best? Because of his mustache. I just love his voice actor. It's like the perfect fucking voice. Who is so, Soli's voice actor? I don't know. I mean, I should know, but I don't. Everyone just knows Nathan Drake is Nolan North. <laughs> but... Overall, um, I'm pretty. Yeah, Sony couldn't top last year's complete curb stomping of Microsoft, but this was still a pretty decent conference. But it just had a few low points again that mainly made it boring. But mm, I think it showed more exclusives than Microsoft did. But it was still a pretty decent conference. Like both Microsoft and Sony did good conferences, but. Um, now we're going to move on to the last one. Nintendo. They had their digital event on the Tuesday of E3. Theirs was like 45 minutes, but 
I, I do want to say Nintendo's was probably the most entertaining, and it's probably becoming my favorite of the conferences. Slightly. Because the first thing they fucking do was have a robot chicken sketch. Which... Were you expecting that? Mm, no. I don't think any of us were expecting robot chicken sketches throughout the digital. I wasn't expecting what happened after that either. Oh, the best the best thing ever happened after that. Awada and Reggie fucking DBZ fighting. Probably the best thing I've ever witnessed in my <laughs> goddamn life. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And, and hilarious. Yeah, that basically led up to um two new reveals for Smash Brothers. Mii's are playable. Fucking and, finally. And they have this new um, uh, to like toy line that'll work for the Wii U. It's kind of like Skylanders and that one Pokemon Rumble game that came out that no one cared about. Yeah, that was confirmed for Smash. I'll go into detail about the toys in a little bit because that came. they explained it a little bit after. Sakurai revealed more details about Smash, going into detail about like the Mii's and stuff, about their move sets and extra stuff. He also revealed that um, I think October 3rd is Smash Bros. on 3DS. We have a concrete release date for 3DS Smash, yet the Wii U version is still getting a holiday release. Um, back to the toy thing. Again, it's like Skylanders, and they're calling these things Amiibos. Weird name, but okay. Uh, people thought, like, People actually had the conception that uh, Amiibos were like a pay-to-win thing, especially for Smash. That's not how it works, because all these Amiibos are apparently all AI things. So if, say you scan it in Smash, it's all AI-based. You don't control these overpowered characters. You fight these AI overpowered characters. And as far as I know, it doesn't work through like online matchmaking and stuff. So it's all local stuff. and. Apparently, having the Amiibos do this levels them up and stuff. It's interesting, but I do like how the figures look in terms of how they're designed. I mean, who knows how many we'll get in terms of Nintendo line stuff. All we just know is Smash is going to be the first one utilizing this, and eventually Mario Kart 8. So does this mean I could play as Samus in Mario Kart 8 eventually? Does this or mean I can be Pac-Man in Mario Kart 8 eventually? Oh yeah! This wasn't at the conference, but Pac-Man's confirmed for Smash. That's news. But, um... Uh, then throughout the conference, they had a couple of, um... I, I want to say they did s something similar to EA, but handled it way better. Where they had developers talk about their game and go into detail about stuff. But actually show gameplay! Instead of early alpha bullshit! Like, like, like they'd show exactly what they're talking about. And the first thing was the the Yoshi's Yarn Game, which now has an official title of Yoshi's Wooly w World. I'll spare you the Wally World jokes. All I just know is one of the best friends pretty much psyched out when his name it was in the title. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, graphically, the game looks really good with its, like, yarn style. And hopefully they learn something from New Island. Oh, it's not being outsourced to garbage developers, so I think they learn easily. And this is a bit off topic on the Yoshi thing, but those yarn knit Yoshis that they played with during the developer thing, I kind of want one. <laughs> I kind of do. Uh, Captain Toad is getting a full game coming this year. If you not don't know what I'm entirely surprised by that. Yeah, because that actually has. Um, that has potential for being a full game, and they're doing it. If you don't know what Captain Toad is, these were like extra levels or side levels in Super Mario 3D World that were still good. But now we're getting a full on game based on that concept, which is pretty cool. And it's going to be coming out this year. Super um, Toad 67. Yep. I'm going to have to link you that image later, Scott, because someone actually fucking redid the cover art. Uh. Bayonetta 2 got more gameplay through a trailer, obviously. But with probably the most interesting news related to Bayonetta. Um, 
So we've got an October release date for Bayonetta 2, but the biggest reveal was that Bayonetta 1 is being included if you get the game. Along with Nintendo themed costumes like Princess Peach, Samus, and Link. Sweet. I, I do have to point this out though about the first game being bundled. If you want the first game with Bayonetta 2, physical release is a must. Because if you get it through the eShop, you're not getting the first game. So that is a big warning to get the game physically. Doesn't bother me too much because I get games physically whenever possible regardless. Like if they have physical releases, if it's digital only for a single game, then you basically have no choice. So Scott, what do you think about Bayonetta 2? I never really played that stuff. I'm looking forward to it, and I know some people who have been holding off on getting a Wii U until Bayonetta 2 comes out. But I still think, like, for most Wii U owners, packaging the first game with Bayonetta 2 is like a freaking genius move. It's like, hey, you didn't play it on Xbox, right? Here you go. Here's the port. Probably better than the PlayStation 3 version still with garbage load times, but... But, but that that's still pretty good news. Maybe I'll give it a shot. I'm just really pessimistic about my skill on video games like that. Because I don't want to trash a game that I know is good because I'm garbage. This is why I don't play fighting games. <coughs> Before I go on, um, they also talked about the new Zelda. And this is going to be a little more open world. They uh, The creator talked about conventions of Zelda and how they wanted to change it. And they showed, and they transitioned into a, uh, a brief trailer about what the new Zelda looks like, and it looks really good. So, we at least know what the the game's gonna graphically look like, and what they're trying to do with the new game. But that's pretty much all we got. But info is info, and it looked really good. And I think that's planning to come out in 2015 as well, I believe. I don't think they had a proper release date for the new Zelda yet. I may be wrong. Uh, we're getting another Kirby game for the Wii U. It's more of a follow-up to Canvas Curse. It's it's the Rainbow Curse or something. It's a it's a it, it's similar to Canvas Curse, but the graphic style is claymation, which looks really cool. So I'll give it that. Like I haven't played too many Kirby games, but uh, whatever. Then they talked about, um, they went into detail about Hyrule Warriors, sh uh, showed some new footage as well as uh, some developer stuff as well. Uh, Midna, and Zelda, uh, <laughs> Midna and Zelda are playable in the game. So there's that. So I'm not sure how many characters we're going to get in Hyrule Warriors, but at least we're getting multiple character choices. Uh, and that's confirmed to come out this year, I think in September. I'm pretty sure there is a concrete date for Hyrule Warriors this year, so there's that. Monolith Soft's new game, X, um, got a trailer, and it actually has a final title now. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Okay. The only thing that made me sad about this news is that it's coming out in 2015, when it was pretty much said, hey, it's coming worldwide this year. Yes, that's not true. Oh, well. Just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. They also revealed uh, Mario Maker, which was actually kind of leaked a bit. But the, the cool thing about Mario Maker is like, a lot of assets are just uh, things that are in the actual game are pretty much Mario Paint inspired. So they brought that stuff back, which was pretty cool because we haven't seen Mario Paint stuff in a while. So once this game comes out, prepare for impossible ROM hacks made easy. Or, you know, now that I think about it, uh, you know those self-plate, like those self-playing levels mm -hmm. that people made? I think that's possible in this one now. So people might make that too. And I think that set that Mar Mario Maker was coming out 2015 as well. Oh, they also showed a trailer, a bit of gameplay in the trailer for Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby for 3DS. If you like Pokemon, yay, it's coming out November 21st. 
then there was a weird announcement of a new game called Splatoon. It's it's a four v four shooting game, but it's mostly focused on like painting the environment more than the other team and stuff. It'd be better if you saw gameplay for it, and it actually doesn't look bad. I was gonna write it off, but I'm just like, this actually seems like it'd be good. I'm just wondering if it's gonna be a full retail release or a downloadable game. You have anything to say about anything I said for the past few minutes before I go on? No. Nope. I still really don't know what to make a Splatoon. Yeah, that's that's the weird thing. Like, it's like it it seems like it'd be good, but like what? Um and that's pretty much all they said during the conference, but before they left, they said a couple more things. Lady Palatina from Kid Icarus Uprising is confirmed for Smash, which apparently that one leak was actually true. So yeah, another Smash character. Along with Pac-Man. And Mr. Game and Watch. Game and Watch was, I think, revealed alongside Pac-Man, subtly. Unless they were lying about that, but pretty sure Game and Watch is in the game too. Then here's a big this was a big tease. Uh they showed Miyamoto messing around with a new game that was blurred out, but they didn't blur it out enough to so you could like not see the game. We're getting a new Star Fox game! <laughs> And I think Miyamoto, and it's definitely confirmed it's a new Star Fox game, because Miyamoto's basically saying it has a year of development left to go. And I'm just like, what, already? Wasn't there some site that accidentally showed it uh, unblurred, and they had later had to pull it? No, it's pretty much shown unblurred now, because they did show it on for E3 a little bit. Not, not in the treehouse, mind you. What they showed in the Treehouse stuff was Miyamoto's two new games, Project Giant Robot and Project something else. What was the Guard. Other? Project Guard. Okay, thank you. I like to call it Space Night Trap. Or, yeah, <laughs> Night Trap Tower Defense. Uh, Project Giant Robot. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I needed to show you that. I think I linked a video about it where... Bill Trinan was in a fucking cardboard robot uniform and fees a mech just fucking wrecked him twice. Oh. Yeah. I think that's pretty much all Nintendo showed at the digital event. They kept showing stuff after that through the treehouse and stuff. Yeah, the thing I was actually most interested in was shown during the treehouse, which was Devil's Third. Yeah, Devil's Third, Itagaki's game that was formerly going to be published by THQ. Um, was apparently in Limbo, then Nintendo brought it up, and instead of being multi-platform, it is now a Wii U exclusive. I don't know much about the game, I did see the trailer though. We'll see, at least on my end. I, I think that'll wrap it up for the conferences. Nintendo's overall, I thought, was really entertaining, and they actually did a good job. Like, hell, out of the main three, not counting Ubisoft, not counting EA, because they're not the main three, all of them had good stuff. Yeah. This was this was an overall good E3, I thought. Which I didn't think I'd be saying that, because I lowered my expectations super hard. But I came out pleasantly surprised this year. Yeah, Nintendo pretty much showed the most stuff that I'd want to buy a console for. Like, I yeah. just want to... I would just want to buy the new Smash Brothers based on the fact that it has me characters alone. Speaking of Smash Brothers, before we stop our E3 talk, uh, me and SCR actually got to go to that Smash Fest at Best Buy. SCR got to go for uh, both days. I only got to go for one of them. So, Scott, why don't you go first? We talked about it. What? what? Smash Fest. What was it what like? about it? What was Smash Fest like? Tell the people what Smash Fest was like when you went. You lined up, you played Smash. Well, how was Smash? <laughs> how did it play, in your opinion, when you... Good. I mean, the one thing that really stuck out was the game runs really, really smooth. Yeah, it, it, it does run really smooth, which is, which is freaking great. Uh... You saw the 3DS version, too, because they had that passing around. Yeah, they had that there specifically to show people the Smash Run mode. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 
Spe I, I did get to play the 3DS version before I went in. I chose Little Mac, and that may have been the worst decision of my life for Smash Run. Because how the hell am I supposed to jump as Little Mac when his aerial stuff is garbage? Was probably not a good idea. And I also didn't have much time to adjust to the controls, because once I finally got to the one minute fight after Smash Run, I had to be dragged in because I was like up in line because they took in groups of 20. But I didn't go alone. It was me and Nightman that actually went because I dragged him along because he was actually on the way. Um, 3DS Smash, uh, I'll probably like the Wii U one better because um, when I played the Wii U one, it felt better. I'm not dissing the 3DS one, but I'm still probably going to pre-order the 3DS one regardless, but I just didn't have much time to adjust to it. I only got to play it once there, where as the Wii U version, me and Nightman got to actually play two rounds before we went back home. First round, I played as the Wii Fit Trainer. Didn't know much about the moveset because she was new. It was interesting to play as, though. I do like her Barkley Soccer Slam Jam move. <laughs> I, and I ended up getting, like, second place when I played as her. And this this isn't really the Smash Fest, but after a first round, me and Nightman went to the Toys R Us right by there. <laughs> like, we just walked right down, went in Toys R Us for a bit. I walked out with, like, a, a small statue set of Power Ranger helmets, and uh, Nightman actually got sent in punishment for the Wii for $3. It might just be because I've been watching a hell of a lot of Adventure Time lately, but I almost thought you were going to say Cinnamon Bun instead of Sin and Punishment. Cinnamon Bun Star Successor. <laughs> Somebody photoshopped that. Oh, jeez. Uh... At, well, after our Toys R Us thing, we went back to, uh, back in line for this, um, uh, for the second run. Um, I was this close to picking Mega Man, but I decided against it because the group right before had Mega Man win and do the final smash live in front of my face. I'm like, yeah, I'm not topping that. I'm picking Zero Suit Samus instead. And I ended up winning as Zero Suit Samus. That, that honestly felt good. Unfortunately, I did not pre-order from Best Buy because the drive was like an hour long. And if I pre-ordered for there, I was not going to drive an hour just to pick it up compared to like less than 10 minutes tops to get to my GameStop. I did get to see the gold coin, though, but I won't have it. Oh, well. But I I'm still going to pre-order the game. It was it was definitely fun going and playing Smash Brothers. The only low point I could say about the whole Smash Fest wasn't the wait, because uh, another one of the Best Buy guys actually passed around Kirby Triple Deluxe, and while I was playing it, um, uh, one person's dog that he had to hang on to for a bit before the mom came back, the dog's tail whacked me in the balls when I was playing Kirby, <laughs> and I'm just like, mm. it sucked. That was the lowest point of the entire wait. Other than that, Smash was pretty fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but that's not the weirdest story that fucking happened at Smash Fest. When me and Nightman were at the very front of the line for our second run, because, again, they take people in 20s to go inside instead of spamming Best Buy. And it was a pretty big Best Buy, too. Um, one of the... Like, since we already played, me and Nightman had our buttons on, which is, one of, which is what me and Nightman walked away with. Uh, like just a little uh, shirt button because all they had was a smash button um, actual Super Smash Brothers for 3DS Wii U button and a sticker so I took just the smash logo what did you go home with again Scott as your swag I got uh, some AR cards one pack for Mario Party and one pack for Bravely Default I, I don't know why my place didn't have stuff like that it was all Smash related for me. Oh well, but the, bu the button was nice. I That was fine with taking it. But anyways, the quick story is, one of the girls came out, <laughs> was pretty much like telling me Nightman, who, mind you, already played once already, explaining that the new Smash was better than sex and that she had sex. And I'm like, uh, Good for you. <laughs> I'm uh... like, okay. 
You don't have to remind me of stuff I can't do aside from playing Smash, but okay. <laughs> what was wrong with the sex? Was the frame rate really bad or? <laughs> No, it was downgraded like Watch Dogs graphics. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. Although I still think the funniest thing the whole time was anytime regular Best Buy co customers were just coming in asking, what's this line for? So me and this Best Buy guy were deciding to go ahead and count how many times people would come up and ask that. And pretty much all of them were like, what the fuck is a Smash Brothers? <laughs> And I think I counted at least 11. <laughs> but that, that was at least fun to go to. Uh, the, the only thing I gotta say is, um, hopefully Nintendo learns from this and has more things set up in preparation. Because one TV is not enough. Because there were a lot of people at your Best Buy thing too, right? Yeah, but keep in mind, they also did something like this last year where they just had the one station set up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I think uh, the Smash one was obviously more popular than last year's. I think that's safe to say. So I think from last year's thing, they said, oh, one TV's fine. And then when they did Smash, numbers pretty much multiplied, and they're like, well, shit, we didn't think this over. Also, so, that they had the Smash Invitational to hype the shit out of things. Oh, easily. Fucking easily. I mean... They had it on Wednesday and Saturday. I went on the Saturday. And concerning the Invitational was the day before the Wednesday one, I could just imagine the people just rushing for the Wednesday one because they're like, dude, fucking smash! By the way, is it just me or over the course of watching the Invitational, did Jeff Keighley go from completely disinterested to kind of sort of into it? I think so. I mean, tell that to the Pikachu voters. You can't vote Pikachu. You can't back get back in your taco. Pikachu's out. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I'm, hell, I kind of want to talk about the invitation a, a bit, but we're going on for a while, and I don't want to keep Aka go up into the fucking wee hours in the morning. Uh, but yeah, the invi well. but in short, the invitational was. Uh, I don't really care for tournaments at all. I kind of have bad history with them. I just don't really care. But I decided to watch it, and it was fucking fun to watch. Maybe, maybe it was just because we were seeing new gameplay of the new Smash Brothers. I think that's what kind of hooked me. Mm -hmm. Also, Super Fighting Robot. <laughs> God, the first thing that happened at uh, the Smash Fest I went to on Wednesday was everyone in the first group picked Mega Man. How did that go? <laughs> oh, I didn't mention it before, but I played as Little Mac, Samus... Danky Kang and Wii Fit Trainer, and I wound up winning a sudden death match as Little Mac. Funny enough, I, I made it to sudden death on 3DS against the AI as Little Mac, but I couldn't do anything because I got pulled in. So it's safe to say AI Mega Man beat me because I stood still. Thanks, Obama. If only you were Luigi, then it would have worked. Uh, like where Mega Man just jumps off the stage and says, fuck this. And Luigi wins by doing nothing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that that was pretty much E3 in a nutshell. It it was a good E3 overall, I'd say. Uh, I I don't think I have anything else to add unless you guys have any final thoughts on E3. Nothing I haven't said already. I have no strong feelings either way. Grim Fandango. I have no yeah, strong cool. feelings one way or the other. I abstain courteously. <laughs> New York abstains. Courteously. <laughs> well, in that case, let's go into viewer questions. Do we actually have any? This, this question any is time. from... No one, because there aren't any. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> We're done. Although, just a reminder, if you do have a question for us, you can ask us on the YouTube upload, the RCG page, which is rivercitygamers.com now. You can also ask us uh, through a YouTube message, although YouTube is really fucking up how that works. And um, you can also ask us on the Facebook group, facebook.com slash rivercitygamers, but never for now. For now. That didn't happen. 
for now. We are going to do video updates. And Akigo, why don't you start us off? Sorry, what were we doing? <laughs> well, before I completely shat myself, uh, we were talking about video updates. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, video updates. Um, I'm working on a bunch of different things all at once, and they're all kind of backed up at the moment. Like, not a whole lot of progress is being made for a number of reasons. And two of them are actually crossovers. Neither of them with River City Gamers members, ironically enough. But Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it's kind of silly. I finally joined River City Gamers with, uh, uh, with the prospect of doing crossovers with you guys, and, and now I'm doing two crossovers, and neither of them are with River City Gamers members. Yeah, that's funny. But, it's not uh, yeah. required by law, don't worry. Yeah, I know. But yeah, one of them is on a movie, the other on a uh, video game. Uh, I'm doing them with some friends of mine, Little Norwegians, and Icky Foo. Not sure if any of you guys are familiar with either of them. But you should definitely check out Icky Fu. He's a really, really underappreciated uh, adventure game reviewer on YouTube. That's I K I F double O. And Little Norwegians, he's a uh, game developer of sorts who recently moved into his own apartment and got a job. So that's cool. And besides that, the other project that I'm working on is a very lengthy retrospective on a animated series from my childhood that I have very strong nostalgic feelings about, which I may or may not have mentioned in the past, but Reboot. it's taking a... What? Reboot. No. But it's taking a very long time to uh, finish because there's a lot of episodes to talk about, I'm talking about every episode one after another. A lot of... Uh, you know, stuff that I want to properly express, so... It's still in the scripting uh, stage, but I'm working on part four out of five right now, so... Once everything is scripted, then I'll, uh... Get around to editing, and then we'll, uh... Yeah, we'll see. That's, uh, pretty much everything I'm working on right now. But there, add that, and there is still, of course, the, uh... 100 Game Oath blog that I may have mentioned before. Right now, I'm at 63 out of 100, so 37 games left to go, in case anyone was wondering. Go the distance. I will. We can't see oh, it, but I'm yeah. nodding. <laughs> then I thank you for your support. Anyway, that's pretty much it, so uh, next. Alright, I'll go next. Um, I've completed recording for... Uh, well, quote unquote completed, completing uh, recording for the next five dollar game I'm doing. Except the next five dollar gaming episode is going to be on two games related to each other. So what I've decided to do is to split it into two parts. So it'll be two separate videos, uh, both five dollar gaming related. And um, I don't have an estimate for when the first part will come out, but uh, I've got the script like two pages in so far, and my scripts are usually like 11 to 12 pages long, but uh, the thing that's really going to set it back is I'm going to SGDQ uh, starting this weekend, and I'll be there for like a week and a half. So all of my time has been into practicing uh, speed runs of the game that I'll be doing for that, which is Ninja Breadman. Oh boy. Yeah, boy. Hopefully that goes over well. And um. I might be around somewhere when uh, the run for Mad World happens. I'm still shocked that that made it, but uh, I'll be around for that one. And that's really all I can say for video updates so far, so uh, Unreal. So uh, for me, I, I don't have any updates, I, I really don't. I I haven't been able to make any progress. I did. I did record. I, I did get some film footage at Smash Fest, and I'm thinking about compiling that with uh, last year's uh, Nintendo thing that I recorded and filmed. We probably release it as like a double video, maybe. But I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to that. 
But aside from like reviews and stuff, I don't have many. I don't have a lot to update because I haven't really had much time. That's basically it on my end. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of the podcast. Once again, I am SCXCR. I am Unreal. And I am Amiura Go. And I'm about to say fuck all y'all and go watch the World Cup. Bye. Bye. Uh, bye. Have fun. Ugh. Gesundheit. Gesundheit.